Just five weeks to go till baby arrives. Cauldron. I'm Johanna, the owner and dyer behind Potion Yarns and host of this podcast. For the new viewers that we have gotten recently, I just want to give you guys a quick update on um, what you've gotten yourself into. What is the Color Cauldron? Um, so this is technically a knitting and fiber podcast, but it's a lot more than that. Um, I've recently been talking to a lot of other makers um, that do a variety of different things, not just in the fiber community. Um, you know, people that sew, people that do woodworking, people that do business, that do Reiki, that do all these different things. And um, a lot of them have been asking me about the podcast, and so I just kind of wanted to give you guys the overview that I've been explaining to other people. Is yes, we primarily talk about yarn and fiber here. Obviously, that's a lot of a lot of us what, what drew us here in the first place, um, and that is the thing that binds us together. But we talk about a lot more than just yarn and fiber. That's kind of like the intro, but there's a lot deeper things that we, we talk about and things going on here. So in addition to yarn and fiber, I really like to talk about my passion. And my passion is creating things and inspiring other people to create. I love to see other people get the spark of excitement in their eyes. I love to see the satisfaction on their face when they create something with their hands. I love to see the dots connect in their head when we're talking and they put two and two together and suddenly the light bulb goes on and they're like, oh my gosh, I got it. I, I have a great idea or I feel really inspired. I can't wait to go make something or do something or change the world or whatever. So that's what this podcast is really about. It's about creating your own magic helping you to learn how to create the life you desire and then how to help spread that into the world to help other people create a beautiful, magical, wonderful life. Does that mean everything always goes beautifully and magically and wonderfully for us? No. In fact, if you've been around for a while, <clears throat> you know that I've shared a lot of stories on the podcast in the past, stories about my personal failures and oopsies and mistakes and lessons I've learned the hard way. Um, a lot of times my own fault, sometimes not my fault, just, you know, that's how the chips fall and you got to deal with it. But we like to talk about those moments a lot on the podcast because that's when it gets hard to remember how to create your own magic. That's when it gets hard to remember why we're here, what we're doing, how to do it. And it's easy to get discouraged and feel like everything's falling apart. Honestly, I've had an awful lot of those days myself lately. I've needed those reminders. Um, sometimes I have to go back and watch my own old episodes to remind myself, um, but I'm also super blessed with a great husband who loves to remind me of those lessons too, and he's so sweet. A lot of the times he'll say, I've heard you say this on your podcast. This is what you need to remember right now. Um, and I think it's really great to have friends and family and a community that helps do that for you. And I know not everybody has that in their face-to-face -face community all the time, so I'm doing what I can to help fill the void and be part of that community as well. And I, I love to get feedback from you guys too. I get so much encouragement from you guys on my Instagram, Facebook, private messages, emails from you guys, comments here on YouTube. I love, love, love getting that feedback and um, hearing you guys send encouragement or advice or um, wise words and just kind of reminding me that I'm not alone in this crazy struggle that we call life. And even when things get a little bit crazy, we are still able to, we can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we react and what we choose to do with what happens to us, and that's where the magic comes in. That's really what creating magic is about. It's about learning to control what you can control and being open to the magic that the universe is gonna show you and the things that you can't. So that's kind of what we like to talk about here on the podcast. Also, this is Phoebe. If you guys haven't met Phoebe before, she is one of my three sweet kitties, and um, she is the podcast star. Every time I get the video out, she is all over the place up in my business trying to get on screen because she knows she steals the show from me every time. All she has to do is like walk across the screen and everyone's like, Phoebe! <laughs> um, doesn't matter what I'm doing, she's way cuter, so <laughs> she'll probably be popping in quite a bit. But let me tell you about some of the things that I've been working on. So last week we did a Saturday night at the movies, which is one of my favorite types of podcasts to do. I absolutely love those. We do them usually once a month. And before that, I took a couple weekends off because of crazy quitting my job at the hair salon, dealing with baby stuff, um, dealing with life hectic craziness. So it's been a little while since I checked in with you guys. And I have been knitting, but I'm going to be really, really honest. I have not been knitting 
a lot. <laughs> so, um, and I'm not actually going to be able to show you everything that I've even been working on because um, I have to keep this one kind of short today. But I did have three projects I wanted to show you, and they're all in various stages of being in process. The first one is one that I showed on the podcast last weekend. I hadn't cast it on yet. But on Saturday night at the movies, I showed you a pattern for some little baby booties that I was going to be casting on. And I went stash diving after I filmed the podcast and found a part of a leftover skein of my hand dyed yarn that I decided to use. So these are the, I believe they're called the cabled, um, cabled cuff baby booties or something like that. Um, I'll put a link to the book that you can find these in below because this does come from a book called uh, Vintage Knits for Modern Babies that I was given at one of my baby showers recently. There's a ton of really cute patterns in there and this one is super fun because it's a DK weight yarn. It knits up super quickly into cute little baby booties. I did both of these in an afternoon. Um, I did not, I haven't sewn them up yet so I still need to sew them together and then there's a little strap you knit that goes across the base of the, um, like where your ankle connects to your foot. So I need to knit the little straps and sew on the buttons and sew them up. But I would have had time to do it um, the afternoon that I sat down and did these. I would have totally been able to do it if I had been more motivated. I was just super lazy and didn't want to get off the sofa and go look for buttons and my other needle size and didn't want to sew them up. So <laughs> I have no excuse except I was lazy. But they're really, really cute. You can see them here. You knit them flat and you use short rows to shape the little toe there. Um, and then you seam them up, knit your strap across the base, and sew on a button. Now mine turned out really, really large. I was trying to knit these small, um, like zero to three month size, and um, I actually grabbed what I thought was a size six needle, and I didn't check it with a needle gauge, and I didn't even bother to look on the um, needle itself to see right where it says what size it is. So I thought it was a size six, which is what the pattern calls for. And of course I didn't swatch because they're baby booties. The swatch is the booty basically. So um, there's no point to swatching something that small. So I just knit them up and I got both of them finished. And I remember thinking when I did the first one, I was like, that's kind of big for like a little newborn. But oh well, I was watching TV and not paying attention and was like, eh, I don't care, I'm too lazy. Are you getting the theme? I've been really lazy lately. <laughs> and so um, I cast on the other one, knit it up and was like, gosh, these are huge for a newborn. I know. A lot of times I think baby stuff is so tiny and then I start knitting it like hats and I'm like how is a baby's head this big and then you see the baby in real life and you try to put the hat on it and you're like oh okay yeah the baby's head is really that big so I tend to underestimate things like that so I was like maybe I'm just thinking they look big but I keep looking at them and I showed them to my husband and he was like those are huge for a newborn and I was like I know they're like gargantuan but he'll grow into them eventually and he can wear them later so I decided not to rip them out but what actually happened was I grabbed a size 8 needle instead of a 6 so yeah my booties turned out really really big <laughs> so I've been feeling less than motivated to finish them but I really think I want to um, they are really cute and it was a great way to use up like leftover scraps in my stash from another project this colorway is my hand dyed yarn, but this was an oopsie skein, so you can't get this exact colorway again. But this was basically an oopsie version of my Whiskey Hangover, which is one of my best selling colorways. Whiskey Hangover is in the shop currently, and you can get it. Um, it's going to look slightly different than this because this was one of the uh, oopsie versions where I was um, a while back, I reformulated this old recipe and tried to be. Uh, get it a little more consistent and be a little bit more efficient in my dyeing of it and I finally came up with the right thing and so the what's in my shop now is the finished version that I am really happy with and proud of but um, it is slightly different than this because one of my dye suppliers um, when I ordered a refill of dye that I used to use in the old whiskey hangover colorway it just kept coming out really, really green, like way too green and so this one came out really green. It's almost a little too much um, when you see it in real life, but it still had that really nice ambery color. So I used one of the oopsie skeins for, um, or a couple of oopsie skeins for a shawl I did a while back, and I had just like two thirds of a skein left, which was perfect for these little booties. So I still need to finish knitting the strap and get those buttons on and get them sewn up, but that's that's what I've been working on. Okay, actually, let's do this one next. Sorry, Phoebes. So the next thing that I've been working on, I started months ago and then it went into timeout for a while like a long while 
like I think I started this in January or early February before I even knew I was pregnant um so this one's been on the needles for a while and then like I said it went into timeout for several months and then it's come out but it is I'm in doing boring stockinette in the round which I actually really love having those projects on hand Maybe, can you see her doing that what are you doing girlfriend get your face out of there um so I enjoy having stockinette in the round or garter stitch easy projects for when I'm like reading because I like to read and knit at the same time or for like the end of the night when I'm really tired and my brain hurts and I just want something easy that I don't have to think about or knitting in a movie theater or a dark area or something like that. Um, I really like to do those kinds of things. So I don't mind having this project going, but it tends to make me save that type of knitting for those types of scenarios. And then when I have a little bit more time and light and attention and energy, I tend to do cables and lace and harder things and baby booties that are going to go really fast and have a lot of different stitch patterns happening and shaping happening because they're so tiny. So I haven't worked on this project for a while, but this is my boxy chevrons. This is by Sosu Knits or um, Suzanne Summers. We have talked about her on the podcast before because I love her stuff. I've knit a bunch of her projects before. And um, this is the boxy chevrons that I cast on in January. Whoops. It's really cool construction. If you haven't knit this sweater before, I highly recommend going and looking at the pattern and considering giving it a try. Um, it is designed to be super big and boxy. So like it's designed to have so much positive ease that if you hold your arms out like this, like it's, it's like a big box, like all the way around you. Um, so I didn't make mine with quite as much positive ease as the pattern called for. I did cut it down a little bit, but I still made it fairly large um, because I wanted a really large drapey swingy top. And then the idea is, you know, when your hands are down and you're going throughout your normal life, um, it really drapes and falls in a nice way, but it's, it's not fitted. It like comes up here through the, through the neckline and then just kind of like drops around you. And it's very like comfy, swooshy, cozy, great with skinny jeans and leggings and all that kind of stuff. Great for pregnant people. So when I um, found out I was pregnant in February, I was like, I'm going to keep working on that because that'll be great to wear as a maternity top. Yeah, it would be if I'd ever finish it, but I have five weeks left of maternity <laughs> and I haven't even gotten close to finishing it. Um, it is taking a lot longer than I expected because you have so much positive ease that the body is just taking forever. Also, like I said, I keep putting it down and working on other things and not staying committed to it. But I am using my hand dyed yarn on this one as well. Um, this black sparkle yarn up here is my Seductress Sparkle Sock, and that is uh, the Samhain colorway. And then the body is uh, a colorway that I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna keep in the shop long term. I really, really love it, but I'm thinking about um, discontinuing it because it hasn't been a great seller. But I love it. Um, it's called April in Paris. And it has this peachy pink background and then all these like neon and super bright speckles all over it. It's crazy busy. It's a really great busy speckle for simple stockinette knitting and things like that. Um, and that is on my Dragonfly BFL base. So Superwash, Blueface, Luster, and Nylon. And I'm really liking how, it's, how they're looking together and how it's knitting up. Um, so I'll be interested to see how we do. Uh, like I started to say earlier, and I think I cut myself off, I love the construction of the of this sweater. You start up with the neckline and sleeves, and then you pick up stitches for the body and knit down. And I'm not going to tell you how to do it because it's you wouldn't be able to figure it out for me just trying to poorly butcher the explanation anyways. And that's why you need to go by the pattern because I'm not going to tell you how she does it. You need to go by the pattern so you can figure out how she does it. But really cool construction on the sleeves and the neckline. I really, really love it. I love how it came out. I love these like welts that she created um, for the top. I love the very graphic nature of it. So this is a great knit. I highly, highly recommend. So I'm hoping I get that finished very soon so I can wear it on my maternity leave. But even if I don't, um, you know, I cast it on before I knew I was pregnant and with the idea of just wearing it as a fun, drapey, boxy, kind of cozy, cute sweater. Um, so I think it'll still look good even if I don't get to wear it on my maternity leave. But I am kind of hoping that I get to wear it while I'm still pregnant, so we'll see. Oh, Phoebe, you look so cute. I don't want to disturb you. I'm sorry, but I have to get into my project bag. Okay, so my last project... Um, I'm actually really, really loving this project. I cast on a new shawl a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, I think a couple weeks ago. I haven't been knitting that much, so I can't remember when I cast it on, but it's going pretty quickly. And I am going to butcher the pronunciation because it's not an English word and I have no idea how to pronounce it. 
but I'll put, excuse me, it's a free pattern, so I will put a link to it below so that you can go check it out. Um, it's the Tokoro or Tokorau, Tokorau, Tokoro shawl, <laughs> something like that. Again, I'll put the link below. Um, but basically, it's just a two color shawl. You just need one skein in each color. And um, you're doing like a stockinette background with this simple little textured stitch that she calls a bud stitch. I've never done one like that before, but I really like it. It's super easy. And then it's broken up by these lace panels that once they're done, will block out nice and pretty. And you will get this nice open work panel through, you know, the center of the shawl. Um, so yeah, I'm almost done. I'm on the last uh, bud stitch section, and then I've got one more little section. I, I don't know, I don't remember if it's lace or just garter, but I've got one little like edging with this other color that I'm gonna do at the bottom, and then I'll be done. So I'm almost finished, and I'm, get, I'm running out of yarn, so good thing I'm almost finished. Um, but I'm really enjoying this shawl. It's going surprisingly quickly for how many stitches I'm up to on the needle, and don't ask because I quit counting a while ago and I don't even remember how many, but it's several hundred. Um, but you start at the top with just a few and then you increase and uh, it continues to grow and it creates this really nice gradual crescent shape. So I love it because I was looking for something to use up these specific colors together. These are both my hand dyed yarns as well. I promise I don't only knit with my own yarns, but right now that's all I'm working on. Um, I can't help it. I'm around gorgeous yarn all day that I dye and I'm so proud of making it. Sometimes I just have to work with it. So this colorway is called Flamboyant Disappointment. Uh, or sorry, Flagrant Disobedience, um, the speckle here. And this is one of my uh, really unique, fun, crazy colorways. And I absolutely love it. I am loving how it knits up. I knew when I dyed it, it was a winner, but knitting with it has been even more fun than I thought it would be. Um, so I love the yellows and oranges and pinks and purples and little speckles of aqua in that colorway. And I wanted to do something to show people that it looks like super, super crazy and busy in the skein. So it looks a little intimidating. And I wanted to show people that it's not that intimidating. It's really gorgeous knit up. It's really not as scary as you think. And so um, I wanted to pair it with this oopsie tonal. This is actually really close to my colorway called Vintage Vixen. It was a batch of Vintage Vixen, but I um, accidentally mismeasured the dyes and I got too much purple in one of the dye pots. And so um, when it came out, I had one whole batch of this that was extra dark and had a little too much purple raspberry to it. So it's not an exact match for my Vintage Vixen colorway because it's just a little bit deeper and more purpley, but it's still gorgeous. So it's called Dark Vixen. Um, and it's almost gone. I think there's only like one or two more skeins left in the shop because it was a whole batch, but it was only one batch. Um, and because of the, it was a mistake, I didn't notice it until after I'd already like dyed it up and pulled it out of the dye pots. And I didn't write down what I did because it was just like an accident. I don't, I don't know what I did. Um, so I can't recreate this colorway exactly. So it was a one of a kind batch. Um, and so I snagged one of the skeins for myself and then the others went in the shop and they've been selling pretty well. But these two together were just so pretty. I had to put them together in a project. I posted a bunch of photos of these two colors together on my Instagram and Facebook and people were like, oh my gosh, those are beautiful. But nobody really wanted to buy it because I think they were scared of this color <laughs> because it's really busy and it has a lot of yellow in it and yellow can be scary for a lot of people. So I'm knitting it up to show off how gorgeous these colors are together. Plus I just wanted another good, like decent medium to large size two color shawl. I just really love shawl knitting. It's like so fun and relaxing for me because you don't have to swatch really. Um, sometimes you do, but usually for a lot of the things I do, I don't have to swatch and you can use up like single skeins a lot of times from your stash and they're just so fun. They're easy to wear. They're great gifts. I love shawl knitting. But that's all I really have right now. Other than that, I have, like I said, I haven't been knitting that much and I've been doing a lot of yarn dyeing and trying to get things ready for shop updates and um, plan ahead for my maternity leave, dye up stuff that I can release while I'm technically not working and on maternity leave and stuff like that. And uh, then just hanging out with friends and getting caught up with family. And it's been very, very busy around here lately. I feel like it shouldn't be because I quit one of my jobs. So now I'm down to one job and prepping for baby. And yet I feel like I have less time than I did before. It's crazy how that works out. But that's my life. Kind of crazy right now. 
Hopefully it'll slow down one of these days. <laughs> Probably not, let's be honest. I don't slow down easily. But that's all I have for you guys today. It is now time to cast off. Love you.